they're just giving money to their buddies. You want to abolish the Federal Reserve? Of course. I don't think that private institutions should have control over a nation's currency. We need a manufacturing base, and then our economy will take off like a rocket again. Ask not what your country can do for you. Ask what you can do for your country. Trying to act like Kissinger isn't even here. Yeah, right. Yeah. They're playing dumb. Yeah, yeah. So, and it should be our view is uh, because we are from Switzerland that the police should do their work and, and not we should say that the last time the case is heard. Bilderberg 2011. I never thought I'd live, or I should say, I never thought Kissinger would live like Bush and these other criminals that are literally wanted as war criminals in many countries. Uh, of course, this is underreported. Uh, Bush can't go to Switzerland. They'll lock him up. He was threatened not to go to England either. There's other people, uh, places in the world, where uh, Kissinger and Bush and Cheney and Rumsfeld, they, they are literally war criminals, and they are war criminals. It's like we have Hitlers and Goebbels and Mengele's all around us in America, and we call them our leaders. It is the greatest gift uh, of fortune that uh, attention is being brought on Henry Kissinger and his evil intentions of the New World Order. It is unbelievable, unprecedented, and I think the people are beginning to understand what this world government uh, is all about and what it means. Uh, Americans are still mostly in the dark, not realizing that our liberties, our freedoms, our sovereignty is at stake. Dominique Bedeg, a Swiss politician, a Swiss uh, congressman, uh, wrote a letter to the local police to stop harassing uh, the protesters and the media people. Um, Mario Borghesio, or Borghesia, was uh, a, a EU member, was not admitted and forcefully removed from Bilderberg because I guess he wasn't on the list uh, and bloodied his nose he's now going to be suing so a lot of bad press for the globalist control freaks um, maybe people are starting to see uh, what's going on maybe people will start to take a, a closer look at these people we're going to keep putting the pressure on them we're talking to Dominique Bettig. Uh, Mr. Bettig, could you just explain your role within Swiss politics and why you decided to write the original letter regarding Henry Kissinger and the Bilderberg Group? Hi. I am a politician for the Swiss uh, People Party, the most important part, political party in Switzerland, and value of this party are independence, freedom, democracy, uh, direct uh, democracy and neutrality and of course what is happening with Bilderberg is exactly the anti-values I'm fighting for and it was important for me to, to, to do something so that the people know what is happening here and to have some pressure on these people and my government so that they don't uh, take part in this meeting but I couldn't have big success <laughs> they, ha they ha actually have their, their meeting and it's a shame for me for my country so that such people can discuss here without people know exactly what is happening about economy about uh, independence of my country probably a free market uh, wars probably was they are doing now in uh, everywhere in the world especially in Libya 
probably uh, tomorrow in Syria, in Iran, I don't know. Uh, as a free citizen of this country, neutral country, I can't accept that probably people could discuss about uh, wars. They are also economic wars. They are doing against all uh, the independent world. And Switzerland is uh, the last free island in, in Europe where we can have uh, an independent way of practicing policy and to we have our, our money, we have our independence, and, and, and it's a great pressure for, for me, for my future, to know that people from my government and this Bilderberg, uh, we are working for Europe, US, and globalization. They are, they are discussing probably part of my future, and I, of as politician, as citizen, I can accept so. So that uh, it's not known, it's not open. I can accept we don't know what is discussed here. Probably what we will be the next after Chauvetskan and other decision. There are two two ministers here, the finance minister from Germany, from Italy. They were very uh, aggressive with my, my country, and are still very aggressive. I, I can understand why my government uh, accept to, to, to discuss here in, uh, with, in such conditions with such uh, uh, people. The Bilderberg Group was uh, founded by a Nazi, Prince Bernard of the Netherlands, and his loving eugenist psychotic cousin, the racist Prince Philip. Uh, both Nazis literally uh, marched with Hitler, uh, Prince Philip, uh, you know, the Bush family, ties to Nazism. Anyway, back to the Bilderberg Group. Admittedly, the EU was devised by the Bilderberg Group. Etienne d'Avignon went on record. I mean, this is what it is. This is the, the manipulation, the evil. Um, I mean, they, they do things in the name of justice and fairness and peace and and, and uh, you know, uh, and, and liberty, where actually they're doing the exact opposite. It's, ex it's totally Luciferian, totally satanic. They do exactly the opposite that they tell you, but you believe what they tell you. And then they deceive you, and you believe them again and again. And the presidents and, and, and ministers and, and foreign dignitaries that are all com controlled by these, these uh, heads of corporations, these 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 mega wealthy people, sixty minute reports on on Gates and on Bernanke, the American Dream, and all this and this great thing, you know, uh, they did the same thing about the Rockefellers, who who you know on record were eugenists and and uh, and caused un untold horrors and miseries and continue to do it. But oh, what great philanthropists they were! I mean, you know, you got to understand that it's a front, it's a cover, it's like psych. It's like warfare 101. It's 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 a psychop, you know. Oh, I do a couple of good things, or I say that I'm doing something good. Meanwhile, I'm doing the opposite. Hitler did, and he succeeded very well. I mean, that's exactly what he did. Anyhow, back to the Bilderberg Group. People here are going to be this year at the meetings, which are concluding, uh, or concluded by now. Uh, were W. Edmund Clark, President and CEO of Canada's second largest bank. Uh, it's unbelievable. All these banking people. Uh, you got um, Davignon, as I mentioned, all of these people, Rockefellers, uh, Gates, uh, the head of Google. You know, and you know what they want to do. They want to shut down the Internet. They, want, they don't want people to talk. They don't want people to wake up. They want to be able to manipulate us and control us for their agenda. They want everybody to be uh, located, notated, and accounted for, like cattle. Unknown to many, many is that your birth certificate has a, a notation from the Commerce Department. Um, newer ones don't, but, the, but they still go through the Commerce Department. You have, your life actually has a value, a commodity value that you can look up and check. It's real. It's not crazy. It's absolutely true. Because we were again pledged through the Federal Reserve and the, and, the, and the Social Security Act. Okay, pledged as collateral for the Federal Reserve criminals who bankrupted our country in only 20 years when they were supposed to save it. 
and then used us as the collateral to pay off the debt. Sort of like what they're doing now. You know, they create all these derivative nightmares and the mortgage fraud and all this other stuff. And then you have to pay them back. Pay them, pay them or they're going to fail and destroy the economy. They're criminals. Wake up. More on Bilderberg. Uh, I have heard that uh, police uh, and security was very um, aggressive uh, against people who wanted to know what is happening here and I couldn't accept that. This is the reason why I wrote a letter to the Minister of Justice of Police of this, this canton so, so, so that she respects the democracy and the freedom of, of expression of, of people. And we had uh, reports earlier that an EU Parliament member had actually approached the hotel, approached the police, and had in fact been assaulted by the police, and there were reports that this uh, individual's nose had been broken by the police. Um, what do you plan to do, and how do you expect the police to react to your plans for later today? Uh, I hope, uh, and probably it, is, it has already happened, that the police is more uh, discreet now, and probably they, they will... Uh, be less aggressive and perhaps uh, we could go closer to this meeting, I hope. Someone peacefully just asked what's going on at a meeting inside and the response is for him to beat down. It's almost a Gandhi-like moment uh, where the group shows their tyranny. Uh, what does that mean? Uh, I, I agree completely with, with you. It's a shame so that uh, something like that happens in, in, the, in the, this country. Uh, I can't completely agree with you. <laughs> it's a shame. It's a shame. It's a shame to see that we don't know as poli Swiss politicians exactly what is happening. We, we had to do a lot of pressure to to, uh, to confirm first uh, this meeting, and after to confirm who, who of our government will attend to this this meeting, and. We had a partial success also because they, they published uh, today the list of participants. Usually they do that later. So, uh, I consider it a success of what we we did, uh, what you did, uh, with making pressure uh, on, on, on these people. And also they had to explain how it works in the, the Bilderberg. And, and uh, they explain that they, they don't vote, they don't, uh, they, they have no topics to, to follow. And uh, if we go uh, more in that, in that direction, it would probably be possible to know more what is happening. And it's, a, it's a victory, a victory of, uh, of transparency against secret. For me, the first step is a, is a victory. Everybody knows and speaks about Bilderberg, <laughs> and they had to publish who, who will attend this meeting. Uh, press is talking about that in all, all the world, it's also a good, a good thing. Uh, probably they will not come another time to, to, to Switzerland. Uh, I consider that as a, as a success. Great men have studied the New World Order from the beginning and covered their exploits. Jim Tucker has been covering the Bilderberg meetings for 35 years. Every year it gets better. Every year for the last several years we've had more protesters out as the public came educated. And today, the time we had a big throng, they got here late. Well, that was the weather. But it's finally good to hear late. They left earlier than uh, ever. They're just not having fun. And I like for them not have the more. When they're not having fun, I'm having fun. The rest of us are. It's just wonderful to see all these. Uh, young people embarrassing them, and the uh, media coverage they uh, got, they prefer none at all, but when they get it, to see that most of the attention goes to the protesters, and quoting the protesters on what's wrong with Bilderberg, and that would be a long quote, uh, and very little attention given to the great dignitaries themselves, that's got their, their uh, punching allegiance real bad. The, uh, Every day they pick up newspapers reading uh, stories about Trump, but protesters, what their opinions are, why they think no, they don't think they know Bilderberg's a bunch of bad boys. It, so it's just, here it gets better, and that's why they're going to fail. Ultimately, they will fail. I think they'll still try to have their meetings because they're so uh, hyped up. But things were not fun, as you uh, notice. The protesters ridiculing them, embarrassing them. And that little walk out, outside to show how independent they are and how they're really nice guys. That too was a failure. 
the questions they got, shouted at them, could not answer. In many cases, they had to pretend they could not hear, could not have a smile. So it's been a successful Trump year. Next year will be better. The next, actually, that's the next one will be better. They're going to lose. Jim, what is your uh, midterm uh, intel to you about their plans to use the economic crisis for greater control? Is that also failing, or uh, will they consolidate more power? Uh, it's not failing as fast as I would like for it to fail. But there is new hope uh, with a, a Congress of Tea Party kids who, not, even when it's in politics, they still uh, stick with their views. They say that uh, we're going to change Medicare. Well, I'm an old Medicare boy now for the last many years. I'm 76, so it's been uh, some years now. But they say it's got to be fixed, and it does have to be fixed, because Medicare was uh, based upon the idea that you will not live to collect. You will pay into it for 30 years or so working years, be deducted from your money. And when you turn 65, with, which was the uh, life expectancy in 1933 for the invented Medicare. Or 30, when they, no, when they, uh, when they uh, invented it, uh, the whole social security thing, of which Medicare is the symbol. The theory was you uh, collect your Medicare, not your Medicare, you carry your uh, social security pension, you start collecting at 65, you die at 65, you paid into it all those years, and uh, you cannot uh, collect for just a few months until you decide to die. Now the life expectancy is 72 for men, I think it is. Uh, so they're having to pay seven years instead of no years to the uh, guy who paid into it all years. And they've all always had these myths about Medicare. So it's, well, your employer pays half of it. You pay it all. Before that guy hires you, he considers the total cost of hiring you. And if uh, altogether it's, it's too much, you're not worth it, you don't get hired. So in that sense, you're really paying, uh, you really are paying all of your Social Security, uh, whether your employer sends a check every month or not. So the whole thing's been uh, some deception. And we're going to have to accept it. Uh, well, I think one proposal is uh, a 55 or older would be effective. The fair way to do it is to say everybody who's 18 years old now will pay into it until say they're 72 years old to life expectancy, or maybe give them a couple of years to live and make it 70. So that uh, when you've paid into it all your life, you get that was promised. And I once proposed that they change Medicare to allow people make their own investments instead, which would be much better. And it was, well, these, some of these guys will not pay into it, then they'll get sick of what are we going to do with it. Well, one thing they could do would simply say, you pay a minimum of your uh, income into safe stocks, uh, very conservative uh, bonds and so forth, or we're going to start collecting Medicare, uh, uh, social security taxes from you. Well, with that option, you'd be a lot better off financially with, uh, with those kind of investments and the same amount of money than you would be uh, on Social Security. Jim, one more question. Uh, for at least two years, they've reported that they're worried about the future of the Euro and the European Union. Was Switzerland aligned in that not only is that system not desired, but that it's not even welcome to be discussed, at least secretly, uh, in this country and perhaps other countries around the world? Uh, yeah, I think they're going to lose the Euro, which is, of course, very important to the Turkeys. The, uh, uh, some countries are talking about getting out of the out. They're afraid the euro will not survive. Uh, uh, Swiss, Switzerland is a great example of resistance. I was told today that 80% of the people in Switzerland are uh, opposed to uh, the euro. I mean, to the European Union. They do not want to be in it. That's a good, solid majority, 80%. And probably after this week, a few more have joined the majority. So, the euro is definitely in trouble. It would be wonderful if it gets blown apart. It very well might get blown apart.